still wrong. So um, as physicians and as a result, our patients have a lot of um, in, uh, focus on the importance of weight loss when it comes to treating metabolic um, abnormalities. And that's um, still an important uh, cornerstone of treatment. However, we'd like to shift the, the focus a little bit by doing this study. Um, and we are interested in trying to uh, understand the importance of muscle mass in uh, metabolic abnormalities. And the message we'd like to send to patients is, while it's still important to you know, measure fat mass loss and uh, aim for weight loss, the maintenance and perhaps even increase of muscle mass is a very important part of therapy and this can be a very positive message because it's hard to lose weight and as long as a person is able to get up start moving keep fit and build muscle mass it may actually be a positive con contributor to its metabolic abnormalities. Insulin resistance is what we looked at in this study and pre-diabetes and these are both important precursors for diabetes and as a result, that it goes on um, a continuum towards cardiovascular risk. Prediabetes is a um, condition which is, I mean, defined clinically by levels of blood sugar, but really encompasses a stage where there is a significant risk of um, developing abnormal metabolism of glucose. So a, a cornerstone of that particular pathology is insulin resistance. When somebody has got insulin resistance, they're not responding normally to their body's own insulin um, secretion. Insulin is a hormone that's released in order to try to store and uh, put glucose where it needs to be in cells. So if you're not responding normally, um, and if you're not uh, able to efficiently metabolize glucose, you have the building blocks for development of diabetes, which is essentially defined by a biochemical threshold. Once you start crossing a level of having um, you know, more than 126 milligrams uh, per deciliter of glucose in your blood, you're defined as having diabetes. But there's a very long prologue where you have abnormal um, levels of glucose and you have abnormal metabolism of glucose because of um, insulin resistance. So it's a long period and that's defined as prediabetes. In 2009, we did an analysis and subsequently published a manuscript looking at um, three measures of obesity, waist-hip ratio, waist circumference, and body mass index. Um, and we looked at those in a group of healthy elderly patients and looked at how they predicted mortality. Um, and what we found was that waist-hip ratio was the best predictor of mortality. Now, waist-hip ratio is ex essentially, as, it, as the name suggests, a ratio between um, abdominal circumference, um, waist circumference, which is a measure of abdominal fat, and hip circumference, which is a measure of predominantly muscle, uh, gluteal musculature, as well as um, bone and fat in that region. And we found it very interesting that waist-hip ratio, so the relative um, in relative excess of abdominal fat compared with the level of muscle and other components in the hip area, which seemed to predict the mortality to the greatest degree. And as a result, we started wondering what is it in this muscle? Maybe the muscle mass itself, therefore, has a, um, a role to play in determining um, the, uh, the level of risk of, of early mortality or mortality in general. So we then did a study um, in the same uh, group of uh, subjects that we've just done, we've, uh, our current study is published in, that is the um, NHANES 3 subjects. And this is a very large national um, study that uh, it's called the N uh, National Health and uh, Nutrition Examination. And it would, was uh, a, an examination done between 1988 and 1994. They looked at 17,000 people more than 20 years old and looked at, um, we were able to get from that a measure of uh, muscle mass. It wasn't a perfect measure, but we were able to get a measure of muscle mass and obesity. And what we looked at is, well, if you have a very low level of muscle mass, so what we called sarcopenia, and you have obesity, um, which is you know, defined by a very high BMI, a very high body mass index, are you at a higher risk of developing um, insulin resistance or is there a greater correlation with insulin resistance and prediabetes than just obesity alone? And we found that uh, there was a positive association so that if you have um, sarcopenic obesity, you had a closer correlation between higher levels of insulin resistance and higher levels of glucose in general than a person with just obesity alone. 
So the next step from there was looking at, well, if we're, instead of looking at just the population have very low muscle mass, is there an association across the board with muscle mass, the spectrum of muscle mass levels? Um, do they predict your level of, of metabolic risk? And we, pre we predicted it, that that would be the case. And indeed, the study has suggested that um, as you increase the amount of, as there's a higher level of muscle mass, there appears to be an association with a um, lower level of insulin resistance and a lower level of prediabetes. I would hasten to add that this is a correlational um, study, a cross-sectional study, which means that there was one data point collection. Um, it wasn't a study over time, and it wasn't a study of an intervention to uh, change muscle mass. Um, therefore, we can't uh, clearly draw a cause and effect type of relationship. We can't say that increasing your muscle mass definitely decreases your insulin resistance and your risk of prediabetes. However, we are able to say that there is a, an, an association there which we would like to look at in, in uh, future studies. So I'd like people to, to shift focus, as I mentioned previously, from just losing weight to getting up, getting moving, and trying to improve levels of muscle mass. And it's very hard to lose weight. So in an obese person, um, knowing that just getting up and starting to move and uh, starting to do activities that build muscle mass might have a, um, a positive effect on their um, metabolic risk is a very po a positive message to send. And that's what I would like people to see. I'd like people to see that um, it's now not uh, it's not worth focusing just on trying to lose muscle, f I mean, on just losing fat mass. It's an important thing to consider how to increase muscle mass. And definitely, you know, we'd like to do some uh, longer term studies looking at whether indeed there is a, a cause and effect association between those two. But the association we've seen in the analysis that we've done in a very large group of people of many different ages suggests that there that we should at least be measuring muscle mass in uh, patients and patients should be aware of this. What is my muscle mass rather than uh, am I trying to am, am I doing the best to decrease my fat mass that it's not where the, that's not where things should stop. We, we are sort of extrapolating from what we've seen to suggest and it seems to suggest that having a high level of muscle mass will have a um, a positive metabolic benefit. And that coupled with what we know uh, happens when the person loses weight might very well have um, an, an even greater additive benefit in terms of their metabolic risk. So yes, that is the message that I'd like people to take home that we shouldn't just be focusing on our on weight lo weight reduction techniques. We should be focusing on techniques to keep active, healthy, and build muscle mass.